Along Highbury Road opposite Broomhill Road used to stand the Highbury Cinema. It opened on Boxing Day in 1921 with seating for 1,100 people, 800 in the stalls and 300 in the circle. The opening film was the silent classic If I Were King starring William Farnham. In 1929 it was modified to show talking movies and was upgraded to Cinemascope in 1955. On the 31st of March 1962 saw the curtains fall on Laurence Olivier as Heathcliff and Merlot Bronner's Cathy in Wuthering Heights. The building was converted into retail use and is now the local co-op in Highbury Vale. Sighted on Main Street in Bulwell, the Picture Palace, built by Edwin Widdowson, was opened on the 11th of December 1911 as a cine variety house. In 1930, a picture tone sound system was installed and the name changed to the Palace Cinema. It had only one screen but seating for 800 people. In the mid 1950s, the Palace Picture House finally closed. Over the years, it has been a co-op, a Wilkinson's, and after several years of standing derelict, opened as the William Peveril, a Weatherspoons pub on the 20th of September 2011. Without a doubt, the most well-remembered of these buildings is the Adelphi Cinema, situated at the bottom of Carey Street. An Art Deco style building designed by Nottingham architect Reginald Cooper, the Adelphi opened to audiences on the 10th of February 1937 with For You Alone, starring Cary Grant and Grace Moore. It had seating for 932 in the stalls and 400 in the circle. By 1961 it was operating as a part-time cinema stroke bingo hall, and given the title showing in 1961 you can see why. From the following flyer, films such as Loss of Innocence, Double Bunk, So Evil, So Young, Cage Girls Without Guys, Nearly a Nasty Accident, open brackets, everything he touches nearly comes off, close brackets, and Weekend with Lulu, I can only assume that audiences in the early 1960s were just sex maniacs. Sadly, the Adelphi was closed as a cinema on the 10th of December 1963, finally showing Howard Keel in Day of the Triffids. It lived on as a bingo club until 1996 when it was closed and the building lay empty until 2001 when it was finally demolished. A KFC now stands on the site. Without a doubt, the Ball Olympia is Ball's lost treasure. It's made all the more sad because there are so few pictures of what it looked like surviving. Those that do show a grand building that would be envy of many a town today. The Olympia opened on the 17th of May 1915 with a traditional bill of pictures and variety. Over the years it's been a theatre and a cinema but spent many years closed to repairs and mining subsidence. Over the last few years of its life it survived by showing naughty nude shows such as Eve Takes It Off and Nude, Neat and Naughty. The final show was on Saturday the 12th of July 1952. A year later the building opened as a branch of Woolworths and before long the exterior was altered and it became another faceless modern building. B&M Bargains now stands on the site of the Ball Olympia. Before we finish, we cannot forget to talk about the one feature film which was shot in Bull during the 1970s. In 1972, the screenplay of Nottingham writer Alan Silito's novel, The Ragman's Daughter, was released. Although not shown in many cinemas due to its X rating, you can still pick up a copy of this online on DVD for a small fortune. All of the exterior work is filmed in Nottingham, but numerous scenes were recorded in Bull, around Station Street and Henderson Scrapyard, now where the tram park is. The film was directed by Harold Becker, who went on later to direct Taps with Tom Cruise and Seared Love with Al Pacino. It stars Simon Rouse, DCI Jack Meadows in the bill, as a cheese warehouse worker with his wife and two kids who hates his dull life. 
He reminisces about the time he met the love of his life and the days they spent riding around on his motorbike, her horse and committing petty thievery. One of the things I found out while researching this video is how little information is available today about these cinemas. With the exception of the Adelphi, what you see in this video is all that appears to exist in photo form. Online anyway. If anyone has any further photos or information, then please contact the Bubble Photos Facebook page and we'll be happy to arrange to have them scanned and shared online for everyone to enjoy. Finally, I hope everyone has enjoyed this video. If you have, please click like on the Facebook page, subscribe to the YouTube channel to encourage your friends and family to do the same. It's your appreciation and encouragement that keeps us going. Thank you till next time.